across the campus and on many campuses. And thank you to my colleagues in uh, California Scholars for Academic Freedom. Uh, also became outraged by this attack on our academic freedom and are mobilizing in a number of ways to defend it. The Committee to Defend Academic Freedom, the student group, has recent, have received hundreds of letters from faculty, from academic associations, and from members of the public around the world demanding that the charges against me be dropped. <laughs> members, members of the faculty on my campus are at this time circulating a petition. Uh, the petition already has just about 100 signatures and it's only been circulating for three days, and it states, in part, since February 25, our colleague, William I. Robinson, professor of sociology, has been the subject of a series of attacks from two students and a number of off-campus individuals that represent a serious breach of academic freedom and a threat to the autonomy of the university. Displeased by the content of an email that, and two articles forwarded by Professor Robinson on January 19 to his class opposing the recent Israeli invasion of Gaza, the two students filed a complaint with the Senate alleging academic misconduct and anti-Semitism. On February 25, the UCSB Academic Senate opened an official inquiry into these allegations. This inquiry is ongoing and has become nationally and internationally known. Quite aside from the merits of the students' complaints, over the past few weeks, the public exposure in this case has brought to light apparent violations of Professor Robinson's right to due process by the Senate and its committees, along with worrisome news of pressures received by the administration from organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League to administer an exemplary punishment to Professor Robinson. We have learned that organizations such as the ADL have organized a campaign directed at pressuring the administration and the Academic Senate to make this case an example, to prevent vocal opposition to the State of Israel and its policies. The situation demands decisive public and swift response by the UCSB faculty in defense of due process and academic freedom on both procedural and substantive grounds. So that is a portion of this petition that's being circulated now to faculty um, on my campus. Meanwhile, I have received several thousand emails and letters from all around the world. Much of this correspondence has been supportive, but there has also been a lot of hate mail, and some of it has been violent and vulgar. Clearly, drawing historical comparisons between Israeli state behavior and Nazi behavior is a very difficult thing for defenders of Israel to swallow. It touches a raw nerve, and this should come as no surprise. On the one hand, as one reader of the Los Angeles Times, uh, its interview with me, the LA Times interview with me, put it in a letter he sent to the editors of the LA Times and to me, quote, if you do not like Nazi comparisons, then urge Israel not to commit Nazi-like atrocities, rather than <laughs> condemn <laughs> and not to both Nazi comparisons. The point is that one evokes the Nazis to point out and condemn Nazi-like behavior. This much should be evident. In this regard, there is a definite parallel between the Warsaw Ghetto and Gaza. The Nazis uh, undertook forced population transfer and then sealed off the ghetto, locking their victims in, controlling all movements, controlling what food, medical supplies, or anything else could go in or out, generating in this way a humanitarian crisis, disease and starvation, and responding then with disproportionate force against the slightest sign of resistance from the ghetto. The Israelis have done the same thing in Gaza. In effect, turning it into a concentration camp, a massive ghetto. As a result of the Israeli blockade of Gaza and the destruction of its food supply system, according to the United Nations, acute malnutrition in Gaza is on the same scale as the poorest nations in southern Sahara, with more than half of all Palestinian families eating only one meal a day. On the other hand, quite evidently, the comparison between Nazi atrocities against Jews in World War II and Israeli atrocities against Palestinians in the present is not intended to suggest that the latter replicates the former. The differences are numerous. No two historical events or processes are ever identical. Drawing analogies or comparisons between historical and contemporary events or processes is not intended to suggest that they are identical. Rather, 
Such comparisons are a pedagogical tool meant to uncover patterns of human conduct, or better put, human misconduct, that may manifest themselves in a variety of historical circumstances. To identify what structural conditions may give rise to these forms of conduct, and to reflect on the past, so that collective agents in the present may gain a greater understanding of the significance or meaning of such contemporary events that share similar characteristics with those of the past, and then hopefully go on to act on the basis of these understandings. Zionists and defenders of the Israeli state take great offense at any analogy between the Nazis and Israeli state actions, in part because the Jewish Holocaust is used by the Israeli state and the Zionist political project as a mechanism of legitimation, so that to draw such analyses is to undermine Israel's legitimating discourse. It is crucial to point this out, because that discourse has gradually come to legitimate current or proposed Israeli policies that demonstrate an ever more frightening similarity with other historical instances of genocide. Really, what we are seeing now is pre-genocidal activities. The political party of Israel's foreign minister, Avigdor Lieberman, recently proposed a law to imprison for three years anyone who commemorates the Nakba. This proposal, coming from a party in Israel's governing coalition, should set off alarm bells that fashion.